Hello ladies and gentlemen, I'm back, and here in front of you is a opal doublet. So following on from my opal triplet video, which people seem to enjoy quite a bit, I'm gonna just go into doublets. It's very similar information, but there are a few differences, and the differences are actually pretty interesting when you're assessing jewellery and stuff, so we'll get into that. So this is an opal doublet, as the name suggests. It's literally made up of two parts. So you can see there, the top surface, it just looks like a plain old ordinary opal. It's pretty low domed, but if you flip it onto its side, you can see here that there's this distinct difference between the opal, this straight line of black, and then the backing, which is a boulder. So that is the clear telltale signs of how to get the, uh, get the difference between a solid and a doublet or a triplet, there's always these interfaces between them. And here you can see that it's this dead straight line of this black resin of some sort. I believe it's a UV cured resin. But in general, the back the backing can be anything really. It can be like those triplets we looked at the other day, the glass, or it can be obsidian. It can be all sorts of things. Black potch is pretty commonly used. Ironstone is probably the most commonly used, or at least the one I see the most. Oh, maybe black potch. Between those two, those two get used quite heavily. Because it does give it that more natural look, especially if you're going to have this exposed. And in those cases, some people might not be able to tell them apart from a solid. So, why do we make opal doublets and what are they useful for? It's a very good way to use thin crystal material. So, material that... with The, the colour just doesn't pop on it because the crystal is a little bit too thin and you just see through it. So, the background of whatever's behind it is typically what you see. And if there's nothing sitting right up against the back, then you'll just look straight through it. The colour will be all washed out. I'm sure you've seen it countless times. So, here you can actually put something dark behind it and it just traps that light and just bounces back those beautiful colours at you. Which is typically why you like to use a black backing, but it doesn't really matter so much as long as you've got a nice dyed glue that's holding the two together. It'll just, that'll provide enough of a black at the back. And you can have a special texture doublet, the old Sharpie doublet as we call it, where you can just test a piece of crystal opal by just colouring in the back with a black texture or a Sharpie, and it'll end up looking more like this. So I'll probably show that at some point when I cut my next crystal. It's easy enough to get off with a bit of alcohol, but yeah, it's even that can be classed as a doublet. Anything where you've modified the back of a stone and it's not just the opal on its own, that's a doublet. So here we've got an ironstone backing, black dyed glue. It's a very low dome, as I mentioned before. You can actually have standard high domed ones, which are a lot harder to tell when they're set, whether they're a doublet or not. Like I mentioned with the bezel setting in the previous triplet video, with a doublet, if there's a bezel set and you can't see those sides, this is all pure natural opal on the top. So you can actually make it look like the ring or whatever, the pendant, has a solid opal in it. Because there's not a huge way of telling. In the triplets, you could tell because the magnification between the center, the high point of the quartz dome, and the outer edge, you can see that the refraction of the light has this weird magnification effect that I tried to display in that last video. In a doublet, this is all just solid natural opal, so you can't actually tell looking straight at the face of it whether it's a doublet or a solid. So you have to be able to see the sides. Sometimes it's a dead giveaway if it's an open back setting, so it could still be bezel set, but there's a window in the back. And if you see an opal that looks kind of like this, it's not really what you see in boulder opal, this kind of pattern, this kind of colour play. So if you turn over the pendant and you see a little back and you see ironstone behind it, then that's a dead giveaway that it is that it is a doublet. But if this was something more natural looking like a dark or a yeah, like a grey base kind of potch behind it, you'd still really want to be able to see that outer edge to be able to determine whether it's a doublet or not. It's quite a lot trickier than telling apart a triplet. Triplet has that clear synthetic kind of look. Not synthetic, but clear magnified look. Which, yeah, is much easier to tell from the front. You don't really need to look at the side shot. But with a doublet, you really do sometimes need to see that side edge. And the dead giveaway is just that dead straight line between the two interfaces with a little bit of glue between it. That's, that's your giveaway. 
So they're quite useful in jewelry just because of the price. So this is much cheaper than that of a solid. It's a little bit more expensive than a triplet and some gem doublets can actually go for quite a lot. You'll be surprised at how much you can sell a gem doublet for because it is actually quite useful. And it's quite a good use of material, something that just won't cut it as a solid. But you just chuck a little bit of backing on it. Sometimes this ratio of opal to backing is actually a lot different and there's much less backing and much more opal. If you just need it to block out that light from escaping out the back and you've still got a nice little crystal opal, some people do that. But typically, it's similar to this. Most of the time I see higher domes than this one. This is quite flat. This could have even maybe possibly made been made into a triplet. It could still be made into a triplet at this stage, but it's showing plenty of color, plenty of play. I think it's doing perfectly fine as a doublet. It's nice and thick. It's okay. The only problem with using this in jewellery as opposed to the triplet, the benefit of the triplet is that hard dome on the outside, so it's more impervious to striking, any kind of scratches and stuff are harder to, harder to get. This is just straight opal, so it's very soft. It's got all those properties of normal opal, so you can still get it scratched and all that kind of stuff. It's a very soft material, so you've got to be very careful about that. Also, it does still suffer from the same effect of water getting into that into that glue layer and then these two layers peeling apart. So that's always that's always a little bit of a risk as well with all of these composite doublets and triplets. So yeah, that's pretty much all I can say about doublets. Pricing wise you're looking much less than a solid but sometimes it can be a lot more than a triplet so it's not going to be like one tenth of the solid equivalent. Sometimes you can even see gem ones go for like half the price of what you would expect for a solid. Sometimes I've seen people, well, of course, you, you see plenty of people trying to pass it off as a solid, which means you'll end up paying 100% of the solid equivalent. Just don't do that. Make sure you confirm if it's a doublet or if it's a solid. You don't want to be forking out too much at all, especially since that's how much opal you're getting. So this one is in particular an interesting one because it's so thin. Typically it's a little bit thicker than that and a bit higher domed. This is a very flat top, flat top doublet, but I like it. It's quite, it's quite nice. Not a lot of flaws in it. So yeah, I'm a, I'm much more of a fan of doublets than I am triplets. Doublets I can, you can get that real solid opal look, that color play, everything, it behaves as it should. Whereas the triplets you get that magnification and weird light, light changes within it and you get that odd look from the side and yeah triplets not my thing doublets i can i can see a good use for doublets so i'm a big fan of doublets it still looks like a solid if you just look at it front on it's quite nice now just quickly to close off the video we'll just have a really good in-depth look this is using a macro lens with a bit of a magnification so you can see there see how straight that line is there's a little bit of a nick over there which has affected the line a little bit but you can see here just this dead straight line clear meeting of two different boundaries but no quartz layer on top literally just the opal and the ironstone backing and you can see here it's just your standard typical Queensland boulder opal ironstone pretty porous not polished perfectly or anything like that you don't need the backs polished it's just the rough and rugged but you can see here that if you could only see the front and not the edges there would be no telling whether this is a doublet or a trip uh, or a solid no, none of those shadow effects happen because that opal is on the surface it's not being projected up there at all so yeah few little sweat drops on there because it is 40 degrees in my shed so probably a good time to cut off the video here I'll see you in the next one where I'll probably be carving something I might even be carving some uh, boulder opal so you'll probably see some more of this ironstone hopefully some precious opal with it but we'll see I'm gonna go before I melt in the shed I'll see you in the next video